Hello people, in this video we want to look at the extra intestinal amoebiasis, right? So we have finished intestinal amoebiasis, now we want to move on to extra intestinal amoebiasis, guys. So first of all see where we are, we are looking at parasitology, amoeba, what amoeba are, the types of amoeba, then we saw the history and distribution, then we saw the morphology of entamoeba histolytica. Now, after that, we saw the life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica. Then we have seen the pathogenesis and clinical features in which we have finished the intestinal amoebiasis. Then we saw the factors that help the virulence for amoeba. Then we saw the differences between bacillary and amoebic dysentery. So these were the differences between bacillary and amoebic dysentery. Entamoeba histolytica causes the amoebic dysentery, right? Bacillary dysentery is caused by bacteria. Then we saw the complications of intestinal amoebiasis. The complications of intestinal amoebiasis were toxic megacolon, perianal ulceration, amoeboma, etc., fulminant amoebic, col uh, amoebic colitis, etc. Then, because of the intestinal amoebiasis, extra intestinal amoebiasis also can result. So, those are the complications. What are the extra intestinal amoebiasis, guys? There can be hepatitis, liver abscess. There can be appendicitis, peritonitis, amoebiasis, right? Pulmonary, sorry, pulmonary amoebiasis, cerebral amoebiasis, plenic abscess, cutaneous amoebiasis, and genitourinary amoebiasis. So it will affect what and all in the body. It can affect the uh, appendicitis. It can cause appendicitis. Then it can cause peritonitis. It can affect the liver as uh, liver amoebiasis or liver abscess, and then. Uh, it can affect the lungs, so that it can be pulmonary amoebiasis and in the brain there can be what they call as cerebral amoebiasis and also they are saying genitourinary amoebiasis. So let's write that also. So they are saying what and all? Peritoneal uh, problems then they said something like, uh, did we miss something? Cutaneous and genitourinary. So cutaneous will put here on the skin. Cutaneous also can be caused. So these are the extra intestinal amoebiasis locations. Okay. So basically in the liver what will happen? We will look at that now. Then we will move on to the others. So hepatic amoebiasis. So in hepatic amoebiasis basically that is the liver is affected. How is the liver affected guys? Because uh, this is the photo of the liver. Just look at the liver uh, problem that it is facing because of the intestinal amoebiasis. Okay. So, this is these are the liver abscess, correct? These are the this photo shows the liver abscess. Okay. Now, let us move on. Hepatic amoebiasis, basically hepatic involvement is the most common. Actually, a very small portion of intestinal amoebiasis become extra intestinal. But in that, what is common is the hepatic amoebiasis. The liver is affected a lot. Okay, basically um, what happens is um, in such people who have hepatic amoebiasis, they may, they may not even have amoebic dysentery, but they will have liver problem. Now, there can be amoebic hepatitis, liver abscess. These two words are important. Hepatitis is the enlargement of the liver and there can be abscess like pus and all that, right? I'm not sure if it is pus. There can be abscess, right? It is a big thing where the trophozoites are multiplying, right? Yeah, they're calling, they're saying that there is containing. It contains thick chocolate brown anchovy sauce type of pus. Oh, so there is pus. So thick chocolate brown pus will be there. Can we make it darker than this because it is chocolate brown? Do you have a chocolate brown? Okay. So thick chocolate brown pus will be there. Anchovy sauce pus. Okay. So what and all will be there? Hepatitis and liver abscess. Now how this hepatitis? Hepatitis is enlarged liver. Okay. There may or may not be liver impairment because of the lysosomal enzymes and cytokines from the inflammatory cells. Okay, So around these trophozoites, the trophozoites are actually not causing problem. The inflammatory cells which are around the trophozoites are causing problem. Liver abscess will be there. Chocolate brown anchovy sauce pus. Okay, So whenever you remember chocolate brown pus in the liver, what will it be? It can be 
amoeba ant amoeba histolytica okay they are usually uh, located in the upper right lobe of the liver so it is written here you can see the diagram upper right lobe of the liver is affected okay then if the this abscess of the liver is untreated it can rupture and it can go through the diaphragm also so just remember here under the diaphragm an abscess has been drawn okay so these abscess can rupture and you can see from the liver under a sub diaphragm also they have shown some abscess okay so we are done with hepatic amebiasis we are not going into the details then coming to pulmonary amebiasis so let's continue with pulmonary amebiasis so what happens without even going to liver directly in these amoeba can affect the uh, lungs because it, they are entering the blood stream correct so see remember you remember that uh, it was a nice color please yes this one okay see this is the intestine right now in the large intestine you remember we had drawn here that the there is perforation now perforation it will hemorrhage of the blood right blood vessels erosion hemorrhage now through the blood it can reach the heart and then the lungs correct so pulmonary amoebiasis can either be direct via blood or then it can go to liver and from liver the blood draining to the heart may enter the lung so lung can either be direct or via liver right now what part of the lung is affected the lower part of the right lung is usually affected that is why in this they have drawn if you can see the lower part of the right lung is affected okay then <clears throat> We are looking at the pulmonary amoebiasis, guys. So here, what else here? Here also they are talking about um, uh, some hepatobronchial fistula results with expectoration of chocolate brown sputum. Oh, there is going to be some chocolate brown sputum. It's kind of yucky. <laughs> no, chocolate brown sputum. Oh my God. Okay, chocolate brown sputum, guys. In amoebiasis. Okay, then the patient presents with severe pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea, non-productive cough. But you are saying sputum, but non-productive cough. Huh? Are you, what is this? Pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea. Okay, and they are saying it is non-productive cough and they are saying chocolate brown sputum. I am not sure. So let's move on. This was about the lungs being affected because of amoeba. Then we have metastatic amoebiasis here. What happens? The involvement of distant organs can happen because of hematogenous spread. So what and all can have, be affected like kidney, brain, spleen, adrenals. Okay, all these can be affected because of hematogenous spread. Okay, then coming to cutaneous amoebiasis. Actually, this brain thing is fatal. They are saying it will destroy the uh, brain tissue. Okay, it will destroy the brain tissue. Obviously, when it goes there, it will destroy something. Cutaneous amoebiasis is occurs in direct extension around anus. So, direct extension around anus, colostomy site, colostomy site, or discharging sinuses from amoebic abscess. Extensive gangrenous destruction of the skin occurs. The lesion may be mistaken for condyloma or epithelioma. So again, they are mistaking it for a cancer. Right? So around anus, what will happen? Uh, there can be uh, discharging sinus from amoebic abscess, extensive gangrenous destruction. So there can be fistula, right? Discharging sinus can be there. Extensive gangrenous destruction okay can be mistaken with can be mistaken for condyloma or epithelioma okay so let's put this in bracket because it's not the real thing that is happening can be mistaken yes okay genitourinary amoebiasis so even the Genitals are going to be affected. The purpus and glands are affected in penile amoebiasis, which required no, 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 which is acquired through anal intercourse. Okay, through anal intercourse, these people can get penile amoebiasis. Okay, they can get 
penile amoebiasis. By putting the penis into an anus, probably they will get penile amoebiasis. So, in, in females, it can affect vulva, vagina, 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 cervix, okay, and spread from perineum. So, they are saying that from perineum, it can spread to female genitals also. The destructive ulcerative lesions resemble carcinoma. These resemble carcinoma. So, we have seen what and all this amoebiasis will affect extra intestinal sites we have seen. So, we have seen what and all guys. Can you summarize? Okay. So, basically, just this diagram can summarize. Okay. Peritonitis, then here liver, liver uh, hepatitis, amoebic hepatitis, liver abscess. Usually the upper right part of the liver is affected, right? Then uh, here you will have anchovy sauce, that is chocolate brown pus will be there in the liver. Okay. Then there can be subdiaphragmatic abscess. Then then what else? Pulmonary amoebiasis we saw. In pulmonary amoebiasis we saw that there will be chocolate brown sputum, pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea. Metastatic amoebiasis, the amoeba can reach uh, the kidney, the brain, brain tissue can be damaged, it can be fatal, spleen, adrenal glands it can reach. Then cutaneous we saw that uh, especially around the anus they are saying. So I think we have to shift this circle somewhere, right? Let's shift it. The circle, don't put it here. Cutaneous, they are saying, is around the anus. Okay. Okay, we have already put it here. Okay, so that was about the uh, cutaneous amoebiasis. Then you have the genitourinary also. Genitourinary, obviously, through anal intercourse, the penis can get penile amoebiasis. And even the female genital parts can be affected. So, all of these, no, they can mistake with the carcinoma. So, you just remember in amoebae, uh, um, entamoeba, histolytica, lot of places you can confuse the things to be carcinoma. Okay. So, we are done with extraintestinal amoebiasis. Guys, in the next video, what we have to look at, you know, we have to look at uh, laboratory diagnosis, immunity, some things there, treatment and prophylaxis, actually metronidazole is the treatment. Then, what else? Difference between basilary dysentery and amoebic dysentery. This we have finished. Okay. So, in the next video, we will look at the lab diagnosis. Okay. Come back for the next video if you want. Tata. Bye-bye.